first of all, for all the participants of this convention, both international and from here in Nigeria, please give yourselves a round of applause. I know that the last two days have been very hectic in schedule because we wanted to make sure that as much can be brought out from this conference because it's you, especially the leaders here in Nigeria, that will need to carry the mantle forward to really bring about a substantial change in your communities and this na great nation of Nigeria. I know that you were challenged in many ways, but at the same time, I think many of you were enlightened by the hope and the possibility of this great moment in the history of your, of your nation and this continent of Africa. As I mentioned in my speech yesterday in the opening plen plenary, I believe Africa is in a moment of transition. You have reached a high pinnacle and yet there are greater heights before you if you are willing to take on the challenge. And I am so moved by the very fact in meeting and speaking to the various leaders in this nation that you are truly willing and ready to take that challenge. When I mentioned that this is an exciting moment in the history of this continent, is because this is really a break from the traditional relationship that this continent had with the developed world. I believe that the developed world has lost its patina of credibility over the last several years with the breakdown of the financial system, with the lack of leadership on a global stage dealing with very real problems that are facing many, many millions of people around the world. In this vacuum, there's an opportunity for new leadership to rise, setting a new precedent. Now, being from somebody from a developed country, I call America my home today. I know of the potential of America, but at the same time, I know the challenges within America. When I come to a continent such as Africa, where all you have is your future ahead of you. And you can learn from the lessons of those nations that have charted the path of development before you. You can pick and choose the path to your development. This gives Africa and the developing world a tremendous bevy of opportunities to really chart the path for their development, for their prosperity, without sacrificing some of the more important things that many nations that came before you had to sacrifice for the sake of modernity. Now as a Korean, I know this personally. Yes, Korea was at one, moment, one point in its history, South Korea, the poorest nation in the world after the Korean War. It was poorer than Nigeria. Yet today, 60 years later, it is the 12th largest economy in the world. The Korean people reached those heights because they chose to be self-reliant. They chose to determine their own future. And in one sense, they bought into the whole Western model of development, even giving up some of the most cherished and most important parts of their culture and tradition, one of which is the Korean family. I believe that the developing world in Southeast Asia, in Latin America, and in Africa can learn from these lessons. So they can chart a path for development that affects the lives in a positive way of all their citizens, but at the same time, do not lose something in the process. And I believe that through this vision of one family under God and the fact that we are touching upon the core root issues that can bring about a peaceful, harmonious, united humanity, which are really our, spiritual, our spirituality, 
rooted in principles and values and a common spiritual vision. Now, in the past, many institutions, organizations, individuals, and nations have tried to deal and tackle with the issue of conflict and peace and corruption. And they have done it through political or diplomatic means or economic aid. And they have done and followed that same paradigm over decades and decades and decades with the same result, without really resolving any major conflict in any part of our globe without really sincerely dealing with the issue of peace, defining what that means, and without rooting out corruption that plagues all of our nations around the world, even in the developed world. The reason why, I believe, is because we have failed to identify how to address those issues. Those issues fall in the realm of ethics, morality, sense of right or wrong that is tied to humanity's spirituality. And yet, no one and no organization have tried to deal with this from that perspective. Yes, in the past there were many interfaith initiatives, but remember that the interfaith initiatives of the past have been a vehicle to promote one's faith tradition and gain acceptance by other faith traditions. The interfaith approach of GPF, which is different from the interfaith approaches of the past, is that instead of using interfaith as a vehicle to just receive acceptance by other faith traditions, we have taken the approach that there is a common vision that motivates and animates all of humanity. And that vision is one family under God. But more importantly, there is a common thread that exists in all the faith traditions that articulates and identifies universal principles and values as the guiding compass of our daily lives. In other words, faith traditions and people of faith have more in common than they do differences. I would say that 80% of what we believe in, what we aspire to, what we uh, have in terms of a common ethic are identical. Maybe 10 to 20% in terms of our theology, our doctrine might differ. Yet, it has been always that 10 to 20% that has been the reason why people of faith have never come together. Well, GPF is offering a new platform that we should come together on common ground to deal with the common issue of our common humanity, and that is to build one family under God. The am- Thank you very much. The amazing thing is, I remember when, when we embarked on this journey several years ago, and I started taking this message all around the world. There were those cynics that, were say, that would say, oh, one family under God sounds too much like a Christian message. Will it work in the Muslim world? Well, one family under God sounds too much like an Abrahamic faith message. Will it work in the Buddhist and Hindu world? I think GPF over the years have developed a track record as we went to every single continent around the world meeting, engaging with people of faith of all different different faith traditions. If you look at this panel today, we have a Methodist, we have a Muslim, we have a Jain, we have Christians, we have Hindus, we have white, black, American, African, Korean, In other words, all those pretensions we hold to the side because we recognize our common humanity and our common destiny together through the vision of one family under God. And we can come together in agreement because we share common principles 
and values that can move the human family forward in building a world of peace. And I think that is the great contribution of this great work. It is a tremendous honor for me to come to this nation of Nigeria, the largest nation on the continent. You know, I was told, not by a Kenyan, <laughs> but I was told, not by other Africans, I was told by everyone outside of Africa that if Nigeria moves, Africa will follow. Now, this is the first time that I came to Nigeria. Believe me, you showed me a lot. You know, many times I, I tell my, my staff, I come to these nations and I never have the chance to go around and actually see the, see the nation itself. Usually I'm stuck in this conference, I'm stuck in meetings. But actually, I, I value those meetings the most as I met with the leaders of this nation. Because as I said in my speech, I do not see the true value of this nation in its resources, although you have tremendous resources, you have tremendous potential. I see the value of this nation in its people and the potential leaders that I could inspire. Hopefully put a spark in them, allow them to dream big for this nation and for this great continent of Africa. It is in those meetings that I saw. I, I told uh, Bishop Sunday, I'm, I'm amazed at Africans. You guys joke so much. I mean, everything is a joke. But you have a tremendous sense of humor that's contagious. You know, for, for someone who comes from outside of this continent, because we see in CNN, in Fox News, in the media all the time, of all the problems that are happening here, we see the pictures of starving children, of conflict zones where tremendous horrors have been conducted by one race or a tribe to another or one religion to another. And of course, we're moved by that. And so we're concerned about this continent. But as I come to Nigeria, and I know that this nation, you're facing challenges even today. When I come to this nation, you think that the people might be depressed or uh, not full of spirit, yet the absolute opposite is the case. Right. Africans, Africans have not been overwhelmed by their challenges. They have the spirit. They have the sense of hope to build a brighter future for themselves, their families, and their future generations. And that, that is more precious than all the oil, gold, or diamonds that are under this continent. That is what will allow Africa to lift itself from its challenges and build a bright future for your children and your children. There always needs to be a first step. Today, look at today as that first step. We're going to be making a pledge, and I, and I want you to make this pledge in the signing of the Abuja Declaration. Your own. Own it. Make this your own. Make this your mission in life to make sure that there is a positive future for this nation of Africa, uh, for this nation of Nigeria and this continent of Africa. Become the leaders of transformation and change. And believe me, God's abundant blessings shall shine and a new tomorrow shall begin. Thank you very much.